Hi folks, Tino here and welcome to the latest episode of CSC Stories right here on the Celtic Exchange. This new series was inspired by the book Football Without Fans, ran and compiled by Davey McIntyre of CelticBars.com and it's a book which provides the definitive and up-to-date history of Celtic supporters clubs around the globe. For this episode we're heading to South West Switzerland to speak with the guys from the Geneva CSC. So lads, welcome to the show. Nick, I'll come to you first. How are things over there? Hi Tino, um, great, thank you very much, um, it's lovely to be on, thanks for having us. No worries. Hey, I'm joined of course uh, by Stevie and Neil as well as Nick, so Stevie, what about yourself, how's things in that part of the world? Yeah, not not bad, um, looking forward to, to, to the weekend and uh, got a nice little trip to Rome coming up so I can watch some of the egg chasing for a wee change. <laughs> when in Rome Stevie, when in Rome. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Neil, finally yourself. I'll come to you just, you know, hello first of all and uh, thanks for coming on. Hello. And if you can start by telling us, Neil, a wee bit about your own Celtic background, how you, you came to be a, a Celtic supporter. Yeah, surely. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm from Ireland, uh, Longford mm-hmm. specifically. I'm very proud. And uh, when I was growing up, um, wasn't, you know, my father wasn't a Celtic supporter per se. But uh, as you can see behind me, um, you know, I've got, Liverpool up there, uh, everybody I grew up with was either Liverpool or United, but the common denominator was Celtic. And so um, just always kind of liked them and uh, always rooted for them. But to be honest, when I moved to Belfast um, in early 2000, that's really when I cemented my 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 love for the club. And uh, then that Europa League run, uh, oh God, uh, you know, well, not even Europa League at the time. You were, uh, what was it? Wafer Cup, pardon. Yeah. You know, in Seville. And uh, I lived in Belfast at the time and watched every single match out in the pub. And that's really in my early 20s where I, I fell in love with the club. And it, it, it's been ever since my love. Um, yeah. And I, I see that shot behind you. I think that's maybe just a wee bit after Seville, but it's certainly from around about that era, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, this was a couple of years after um, uh, I wore that the, the day that, that Roy Keane obviously uh, came over to us. It was a big day for us. I was interviewed back home on television and I was wearing the shirt and oh, I was great. And uh, yeah, like I, I've never stopped loving the club. I, I guess I always had the love, but uh, it was pulled out of me when I, when I lived in Belfast. Yeah. And, you know, great times at that era, you know, under Martin O'Neill and beyond. Stevie, you and I were chatting a wee bit before we came on air there, so you're you're from Presswick, you know, a bit closer to home here. What's your yeah. own Celtic story? Is that something that was bestowed upon you, such, or have you well, got? A- actually, uh, actually not. Um, I, my 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 father wasn't really into football, um, uh, so a, any love that I got for football actually came mm-hmm. out of my out of my grandfather, who who was once in the books of Air United way back uh, pre-war times, um, and. But there was never any. Basically, my Celtic story starts, uh, started by by watching a game in the telly when I was about seven or eight years old, and uh, watching watching the team wearing green and white absolutely hammering somebody. I can't remember who, but it was just like at that time, I'm going to support the team in green, and and that was and that was that was basically it. And that would be about nineteen nineteen eighty. The earliest memory I have of watching, of actually, or the, the earliest memory I have of a game is, in particular, was watching Celtic Aberdeen in 1981 and Paul McStay scored an absolute screamer for about 25 yards. I think it was at Bit Audrey. Um, and I've just basically, I've, I've grown grown up in the club from from that point, from the, from the high points and the, in the eighties, through the let's not talk about the low points in the nineties, uh, through and, and then and then back through the the resurgence in the last twenty or so years, um, I love the club and uh, that's uh, and that's my story in a nut uh, not case nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm I am a nut case. <laughs> um, but you're absolutely spot on in terms of the eighties. You know, some decent times there and centenary year and, and various Aussies for celebration, mm-hmm. but nineties. Far less said, the better. Um, but then, obviously, and as mentioned to Neil, Martin O'Neill time, 2000s. And actually, pretty much from then, you know, we've, we've had a spell of real domestic dominance. Not so much in Europe, but 
maybe we'll chat that through as we go along. Nick, what about yourself? Um, again, you're, you're from close to Celtic Park, Motherwell, I believe. So what's your own Celtic story? Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was born in Bells Hill and I started off life in New Hill uh, before moving to Motherwell. Um, I, unlike Stevie, I kind of grew up around Celtic. Um, I don't have any siblings, but my mum comes from a family of 10, my dad comes from a family of six, they all married, had loads of kids and we all supported Celtic. Um, so, you know, my earliest memories are, you know, going to school and meeting friends um, who supported Celtic, watching sports scene on a Saturday night with my dad, um, even watching tenant sixes with my uncles in the 80s and 90s. Um, and the absolute joy of getting a Celtic kit for my birthday or Christmas and uh, accompanied by that respective annual. I don't know if kids get annuals these days, but I used to get annuals uh, for Christmas and loved it and could regurgitate cover to cover uh, within about a week. So I suppose that's how my, my journey started as a Celtic fan. Yeah. Nick, I'll stay with you at the moment. So it, it was you and I that first made contact in terms of you know doing this recording for the, the CSC stories. And you're the founder uh, of the Geneva CSC. So do you want to tell us a wee bit about that in terms of how it came to be and when it came to be? Absolutely. Um, it starts back, I, I moved away from Scotland about 20, nearly 25 years ago to you. Um, I moved to America with my family, they still live there. Um, so we followed Celtic from afar um, and it used to mean getting up early in the morning, sometimes to watch matches uh, in different locations. However, before I came to Switzerland, I lived in Dublin for 10 years and I was a part of, a, I think it's Dublin's largest CSE called Neve Podrick. And it was just yeah. brilliant. We used to go along with a, another guy from Mother called Stephen Toker, and it was just brilliant fun. It was in the Badass Cafe for people that are familiar with Temple Bar, smack bang in the middle. My office was just around the corner and loved it. Absolutely loved being part of it. So when I moved to Switzerland, um, it was kind of during COVID time and I simply missed it. Um, I had met one or two people along the way. I didn't know anyone in Switzerland. Um, I'd met Stevie, I think, fairly early, and another guy called Kenny. And I thought, well, let's try and set up our own. Um, during my tenure with Neve Podrick, I came across the Association of Irish Celtic Supporters Clubs. I reached out to them and said, look, is there a template for someone to set up a Celtic Supporters Club? I didn't really anticipate what they sent next it was a full you know, template and loads of information. They were you know, on the phone and, you know, trying to help me set this up. It was invaluable, actually. So we started off with picking a name. Uh, we had every name under the sun, uh, but we settled on the Geneva Celtic Supporters Club. We designed a badge, we designed a kit, we set up social media, um, and the very first game that we met, or we registered with Celtic as well, but the very first game we met was August uh, 2022. And it was with me and my friend and co-founder, Kenny Lavelle, and my dog. Um, and it's just grown since there, really. Yeah, it sounds like it's, it's come a long way since two men and a dog, I have to say, and we'll, we'll get to some yeah. of the detail. Um, you mentioned the kit, Nick, and all three of you are sporting it just now. So I'll maybe come to yourself, Neil, for a bit of chat on it. It's a smashing-looking top. It's made by O'Neill's, and I can see that. That's the, the Irish sportswear firm they may call the Gaelic tops, don't they? The GA stuff, so... Yep, Neil proudly posing there. Yeah, for it, it, it's 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 lovely. <laughs> Sponsored oh, lovely. by Mulligan's Irish Bar, which is where you drink. So tell us a bit about the kit, Neil, and how that came to be. Yeah, um, I mean, it goes back to Nick, really. I mean, he's the spearhead of all of this. Um, you know, Sport O'Neill's, they were really good. I mean, we have a group chat, and they, I, I mean, correct me if i'm wrong that's uh i think we had at least 10 prototypes so we kind of voted on which was the best one to go and uh, yeah it's great i mean obviously we have the logo sorry <laughs> go on left right yeah, the logo there csc de Genève. so it kind of is a bit of homage to because it is a french speaking city at per se and uh yeah we got the the pub that we're mainly drinking in and it's lovely, it, you know, it, it's been quite well. Yeah, and I see the, the Kano Foundation on the sleeve. We'll get to the Kano Foundation yeah. later on. Sorry, pardon. Very, 
very important to you guys as well. So we'll cover that just a wee bit later on. Neil, is that something, is a shirt just for you guys in the club or is that something anyone can pick up? Do you have a merchandise inside of things? Neil and Stevie were instrumental in the design of this because we had to pick the right colours, we had to pick the right design. We wondered whether or not we're going to have like a black collar or white collar. Like all this detail was unfolding over multiple WhatsApp groups. But I have to say, O'Neill's were first class. Like we got our own, you know, designer who they really went into the minutia to know about what we really wanted. And Neil, absolutely spot on. We had about 10 prototypes and we all decided on this particular, uh, I suppose, template or model. Um, one of the things that we were absolutely certain about is that we were completely non-profit as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we wanted to have a chosen charity. Um, I'm very fortunate, you know, to know a few of the trustees at the Kano Foundation and we had zero hesitation about picking them as, as our chosen charity. Um, I'd reached out for their blessing and they were more than happy to grant this new Celtic Supporters Club in the middle of nowhere um, authorization to, to use their logo and so on. And uh, it was embossed on the on the sleeve and every shirt uh, sale, uh, a donation is made to um, the Kano Foundation. In actual fact, you know, after production and delivery, uh, and manufacturing, all money goes to the Kano Foundation. Neil also touched on you can buy these jerseys through the Neil's uh, uh, website. However, um, what I would encourage people if they are interested in the jersey is to reach out through our social media. I know we'll get that uh, to that point later in the show, but um, we can get a, a kind of a bulk order deal if we've got lots of uh, orders coming in. And it just means that our donation to Kano is larger if they come directly to us rather than go to Anil's. But you have the option of both depending on which region you're ordering from. Yeah, do you know that's a great show. I'm sure anyone watching at the moment on YouTube will see it's a stunning kit. It's it's really, yeah. really impressive. So if yeah. anyone's having a look just now, I'll uh, catch the details of Nick off Nick towards the end of the piece and you can reach oh, out to the guys for that. Um <laughs> like Superman. Like you know <laughs> but it is it's it's lovely man and it feels nice. It really does fit well. I mean ah, like this is my workout shirt. Like this is <laughs> this is phenomenal. And you know, uh, re remember folks uh, O'Neill's are a great provider but other sportswear companies are available. So indeed absolutely Steve, Steve, I'll come to you at the moment. So in terms of the club, Nick's given us some good background there, founded in August 2022. Nick, his friend and, and the dog. And now I believe there's around about 40 members there. You guys drink in Mulligan's Irish Bar, which is, you know, the, the name emblazoned on the front of the shirt. What's the, the mix of members like there, Steve? You know, is it a mix of Scots, Irish, local folks? What's the what's the general makeup um, there? That's actually, it's, it, it's interesting because I... I I thought that it would be um, th that it would be predominantly Scots in the area, or Celtic fans in the area, and, and and to a certain extent it is. But um, through through the wonders of the of the of the social media, the the Facebook page, and and, and everything, we've had we've had visits from from people from from all over the place. We've had we've had people who who basically take a whim and decide they're going to come out to Geneva because because flights are cheap and I'll go I'll, I'll go and watch a game with these folks for the for, for the day we had a visit uh, just before Christmas I think it was was it it was the, the Scottish Cup uh, first Scottish first round of Scottish Cup we had a visit from the from the from a couple of guys at the Lurgan CSC um which was uh, which was spectacular <laughs> um and so while there's a there, there's a core group of I guess about thirty of us, um, who some of them are from and uh, some of them like me have been here since since the before times uh, I suppose you'd call it. I mean, when I first came here, there was a, there was a, a group of about ten people from the from the Geneva Scottish Football Club who were Celtic fans who just got together and watched games. Um and and we had a loose affiliation with with the with the larger Celtic supporters club Switzerland, which is uh, based up in uh, up in uh, Thun near near Bern. Um, but uh, Nick 
Nick came across, and uh, and suddenly we we went from. I was I, I wasn't the, the the first few games that that they watched together. I was stuck in France because COVID rules didn't let me out, basically. So I, I wasn't allowed to come out to play for the first few games. Uh, but we're a we're a pretty close bunch now, and uh, it's it's fantastic to ha- it's it's fantastic just to, just to have a a club like this on your on your doorstep. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick, we've mentioned Mulligans a few times, so I'd be keen to get a wee bit more chat on how your relationship started with them. Clearly, it's quite set in stone the very fact they're on the shirt. And I know there's there's an alternative pub, isn't it, that the family owners at Charlie O'Neill's? But tell us about the family that run Mulligans and how important they've been to you guys as a club. Hundred percent. And if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to take the first part of that um, answer and then maybe pass it on to Neil, who knows them a lot more personal than I do. But I think. One of the observations we had, Tino, was, you know, there is other supporters clubs in Geneva. There's a Manchester United one, there's a Liverpool one, uh, I think there's Chelsea and West Ham and so on. And whilst, you know, I personally think Celtic is the biggest club in the world, um, you know, people that own pubs don't. So, you know, on occasion, you wouldn't get preference off the big screen or any screen for that matter. Um, the one that strikes... Um, in the memory is I remember when it was the the women's uh, Euros fight uh, Euros final. I think England were playing in it. We simply couldn't find a pub that had uh, an open TV to put on the Celtic game. And I remember thinking, look, we can't just do this on an ad hoc basis. We need a partnership, a proper collaboration with a, a, a publican. And there is a large Scottish and Irish community here that tends to drink in. The, the Irish bars here and um, we got quite friendly with uh, the owner I got quite pally with Neil and um, we put the case forward and just said look we'd love to not only start a Geneva Celtic supporters club but we'd love to have it in here I think we can grow this and Neil very kindly took the reins on this and spoke to um, the owner um, and maybe this is the point, Neil, I'll pass it on to you and you can give a bit of background about Charlie's and Mulligan's if you wish. Yeah, um, everything that Nick said is completely correct. Uh, what was happening naturally is that Mulligan's is never open on a Sunday. It never was. It was open in 1996 and just was a six day pub. That's the way it was. It's the way it always was. And um, you know, I'm here a couple of years basically, and I get to know lads, you get to know where they who they support, and you would just find the odd fella like, Oh wow, you're a Celtic supporter, so am I. So it was like a little thing, and then it came to the big match. I don't need to tell you who the other team should be, of course. <laughs> I know Nick is gonna probably laugh now, the old firm, which I still keep kind of naturally going to say but he's shaking his head it's not actually the old firm right technically mm-hmm. but we won't get into that this evening not today. you know and, and, and what the lads had to do was i mean look listen if we play rangers it's always going to be on a sunday right i mean come on i i know maybe was it last year the year before we played them on a wednesday night but that was a cup match or something like that but we don't play them in a league match anything other than a sunday obviously for police reasons this that and the other so you cannot watch a Celtic match in Mulligans on a Sunday. That's the way it is. That's the way I inherited my position. And it annoyed me. It really annoyed me to great lengths because the lads have to go to, and I will tell you the name of the pub. And it's a great place. It's ran well. Great, television setup, phenomenal. The place is called Lady Godiva. You know, I mean, it could be more English. Uh, and it, it, you know, and listen, fair play to the people who were there. They had the place open. So the lads were watching it there. And I heard this. And I was like, that's annoying me. I'm working in an Irish pub. It could be open on that day, but we're not open. And they're going to an English pub where, you know, and Stevie, I, I, I think you should go to him after m- myself. Like He was here longer before myself. He can tell you stories about how they... Like Celtic supporters were kind of really thrown to the wind, you know, even when we, there was 10 of them and there was maybe one fellow wanting to watch English league match, this, that and the other. So I basically took it upon myself. I can't remember. It's probably 
Nick could probably help me. I want to say it's about two, three years ago, right after COVID, all the reopenings finished. Um, we we were playing Rangers. It was Sunday, and I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, we're not supposed to curse, so I'll say F it. I said, I have the key. I have the alarm code. I said to the lads, come in, lads. I, I'm going to open the pub for you. I'm only going to open an hour before the match. Uh, after the match finishes, an hour later, I'm going to close up and go. And they were like, yeah, no bother. And they came in. We watched Celtic Rangers. We bet them. And that really, for me, is the real start of how this has all occurred. We all kind of came together. We all had ideas. And for me, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm great, this, that, and the other. But I was like, you know what? Feck it. I'm, I'm going to open this pub. Let's do it. And, and to be fair to the owner and the manager, uh, the owner is Donald, the, the manager Sam, who are lovely lads. You know, I really liked working for them. But they were like, nobody's going to come in and watch a Celtic match. Like, nobody's going to come in for that. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm telling you, there's going to be 10 plus fellas. And the first day, I mean, there was nearly 20 of us. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And the owner and the manager have now bought in. And now it's really a thing. And it's lovely. And I'm, yeah, I'm so proud. It's a great background to it. And we've realised through these conversations just how important the, the relationships with the various bars are. If you don't have a place to meet, you kind of don't have anything. You know, you've got a CSC in spirit, perhaps, but you don't really have a, a proper club there. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you were on to explain Neil that you worked in Mulligans. I thought you just stumbled upon the key and let your mates in one Sunday. And- <laughs> he did, you know. He does not work there. Yeah. Um, I, I might be from Ireland, but I'm not that Dutch. <laughs> yeah. Stevie, Stevie, just to come back to yourself, then uh, obviously that you know the clubs uh, rel- relatively new. And one of the newest clubs we've spoken to, you know, year and a year and a half old, give or take. But you've been out there for the best part of twenty years, so. What's the challenge been like in terms of trying to catch Celtic games over that last couple of decades? Um, it, it it was a real challenge to start with because we 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 used to go to we used to go to Charlie and Eels um, way back at the start, and Charlie and Eels then it had an issue um, that uh, uh, we went for one game. It, and I can't remember if it was a flag day or if it was the day we were going to win the title and Charlie O'Neill's wasn't open. Uh, it was a 12 o'clock kickoff or a 1 o'clock kickoff over here on a, on a Sunday. It wasn't open. Um, we got told, we phoned around, we got told it wasn't going to open until 3 o'clock. Uh, so thankfully things have changed now uh, and and we've got that. But then there was a, there was a place called the Clubhouse uh, which was owned by uh, one of our mates, and he always made sure that the that if the, if if there was a, a Scottish game on, whether it was us, whether it was them, whether it was Hearts Hibs or, or or whoever, if there was a Scottish game on, it was going to be in one of his big TVs, and that was that was where we watched games for a long time, just before COVID, that that place closed down, and then we were left to go into Godivers, which is. Which is all right. Uh, it's uh, it's a decent enough place to watch it, or or, or we go to the other, or, or or we would go to to the other English pub. Um, but there's a there's an atmosphere, and, and again, I'll, I'll I'll go to the Paul McStay. There's a buzz about the place when you go to when you go to, when you go and watch a game at uh, Mulligans these days. It's uh, there's always a a good a. a I, it, it's it's a good laugh as well as as well as shouting and swearing at the TV when things aren't going well. You know, there's always there's always loads of loads of other like just just general chat and it's 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 brilliant. Uh, I used to go to Mulligans a lot um, before I moved to, before I moved to France. I told you earlier on about that story, um, but um, uh, then after I moved here. Um, it, it was I didn't go as often because it's kind of awkward, but now I've got this reason to, I've, I've got this reason to go there, get myself into town, uh, commune with all these guys. It's uh, it's 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 fantastic. It really is. Do you know it's a one-one, isn't it? You guys get a place to 
to be together for the games and Mulligan's got a good turn out it. So there's there's no losers there. Now, just taking a round up this part of the chat, um, yeah. obviously I've mentioned how important the relationship is with the, the bar that he's, he's meeting. What about any other key figures? Obviously there's, there's three of you guys in the chat here just now, but any other you know, folks who have been instrumental in either the, the start-up or the ongoing success of the club? Yeah, um, I think everyone who has turned up, I know that sounds a little uh, too obvious, but I think <clears throat> if we didn't have those people turn up on an ad hoc basis, on a regular basis, we simply wouldn't have a club. Um, so I thank you to the regulars um, and also the social media followers. Um, there's another angle to this. I don't know whether I should mention this because it's another uh, Celtic uh, podcast. I think you might know them. Uh, it's called the Celtic Supporters Podcast. I was at fr- I'm friends with these guys. I grew up with them. I was at school That's with them. De- uh, Dell and the guys. Dell, Hoggy, Barry, Andy, Paddy and Scott. Um, they've been absolutely phenomenal in promoting the CSE through their uh, podcast. Um you know, they're not just pals, they might actually enjoy their show, as well as yours, Tino, I have to say. Um, but they've definitely been instrumental in, you know, uh, driving a lot of uh, traffic to the Geneva CSC social media pages. Um, also, Stevie touched upon it, but I, you know, we get a really warm welcome from the Swiss CSC. They're based in Thun, further up uh, in Switzerland. We went up there last summer to celebrate the 20th um, anniversary as a CSC. Uh, and it was really good to find out, you know, the trials and tribulations over the past couple of decades. Stevie also touched on Maria and Denny from the Lurgan CSC who come over. That's our, our first CSC visitors. And we would encourage all CSEs to come and, um, you know, visit us in Geneva at some point if, if they're passing through this neck of the woods. But I'd like to pass on a very special uh, mention to the countless people who have turned up at the Geneva CSE who woke up hungover on a Sunday and booked a cheap flight to Geneva on Skyscanner. Um, I've lost count of the amount of times that I walked in um, talking to a guy thinking he lived here, but he said, no, it was 56 quid return, so I just booked it. I'm going back later tonight. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed having them there. They're, they're great fun. Um, you know, so, yeah, cheap, cheap, continue. cheap flights, Nick. What's the accommodation like? Do they crash at yours or what's the what's the deal? Uh, well, if you're from Mother, you definitely get a, you know, a couch, for sure, <laughs> in my in my gaff, but um, I don't know. Is the honest answer? I don't know if their hotel in it, Airbnb in it, crash my mates. I I never really asked about their mm-hmm. accommodation status, but um, they're definitely there in their droves. It's not the first time that we've heard people waking up drunk and uh, booking flights over to Geneva because it's cheap and getting a bit of sunshine during the summer months. So long, yeah. long may that continue because it's good fun. Sounds good, and I'm glad you mentioned Dell and the guys at the the Celtic Supporters Club. They're a, they're a lively bunch on the podcast and they, they do some great stuff. And I think, I suppose this is kind of not specifically about us, but I think that's where the podcast can be really valuable to folks who have got Celtic roots but find themselves hundreds, if not thousands of miles from Celtic Park. And it's a way of, of keeping in touch with what's going on back home. So no, it's good to hear that shout. Um, there's a couple of stories I'd like to pick up on. And one is your visit from Jota, an absolute superstar and came... So conquered all that kind of stuff and, and best of luck to him, whatever he does. But is there anyone that would like to pick up the story of, of his visit and how it all came to be and played out? I, I might take that one again, do you know if that's yeah. all right? Um, I'm not sure if the guys know this, but um, it's we have um, we're we're really lucky to have a nice mix at the, the Celtic Supporters Club in Geneva. Um, and we have members that are Scottish, Irish, French, Swiss, and, you know, other parts of the world. Um, but we also have people who were um, really close to Celtic um, in the past. And I asked if it was possible if we could get a shirt signed uh, by a current Celtic player at that point in time. And one of our members um, had a good contact and, and reached out to Jota and, and, and he very kindly signed it. Realistically, it was probably on the proviso that it would have obviously generated a, a little more interest in the, the Geneva Celtic Supporters Club shirt because all profits go to the Kano Foundation. So um, fair play to Jota for doing that. Um, we actually have got that being framed currently by a company in the UK. Um, 
I think it's going to be embossed with a small plaque and pictures of us and picture of him signing the shirt, uh, which is going for a grand unveiling uh, Patrick's Day weekend um, mm-hmm. next week. Um, so, yeah. yeah, we're delighted. To be honest, Mulligans and Charlie O'Neill is a really authentic um, yeah. Irish bars here. And um, I, I hope the owner doesn't mind me saying this, but not a lot of the furniture has moved in a long, long time, which adds to the, char- the charm of this. So what I've said to the lads is, you know, this is um, our tiny piece of um, Mulligans and Charlie O'Neill's history, which will no doubt be there for many decades to come. And I'm delighted mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, great stuff. And Mulligan sounds a place to be. I have to say, you, you've talked it up big time, but it does sound like a, a good place to be catching the games. Um, in terms of catching games, I believe some of you guys um, obviously keen to support local football there in Switzerland and managed to catch Servette playing a Champions League qualifier against another team from Glasgow. Were any of you lads along at that one? Yeah, two I of them there. were, and I wasn't. <laughs> I, I was there. This, uh, Nick was there and our, our good friend Daniel was there as well. I went in that night personally myself with a black hoodie, sunglasses. I never would go to a football match. And underneath I had this very shirt and it was kind of like getting up and going to the seat and taking it off like Superman. And I was like, yeah, I, I can tell you who I am. That was a big night. Um, we were roaring and shouting for Servette, uh, the local football team here. And uh, yeah, the enemy were across the way and uh, <laughs> a photo of mine went viral a little bit locally, maybe a little bit back home. And oh, <laughs> it was a great time. And uh, but we had to represent. That's the way I looked at it. They came here and they were like, this is our city now. And it's like, no, no, no. I'm living here. This is our city. <laughs> If you want to share that photo, Neil, we can get that around the socials as well, and we can see see if we can get you viral again. But what, what was the score on the night? Was that a was that a draw? Or it was it, it was one all. It was one yeah. all. Uh, the worst corner kick you'll ever see by a professional team by the local club here, Servette, in my opinion. We were just there. We had a very good vantage point on the the corner where our seats were, and uh, Servette took the worst corner I think I've ever seen in my entire life by a professional team. Um, yeah, and it was a bit disappointing, but it was a good night, you know, and uh, it was amazing how many, because I didn't know how I was going to go. It was like, you know, why is if this fella here in the middle of a very important European tie wearing, you know, another shirt? And I, I, I just didn't know. Will they know that this is Celtic, that this is the, the arch rivals of, of Rangers, of course? And it, it, they knew <laughs> many. I mean, there was lads coming up and like patting me on the back and everything, which which in a way I was like, it was a bit of a dodgy kind of thing because because there was a Rangers lad, Nick, you could, if you remember, we, we looked up and it was just, I mean, a couple of rows over, like way up in the stands. We could see one lad in a Rangers shirt. So, you know, I always had this thing in the back of my mind. I'm 43. I'm a teacher. I mean, I'm going to this match. Like, I don't want to be getting in a fight, but. I just felt like they were here in our city where I live. I have to wear this shirt. I have to and say, you know, no, no, this is not your 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 team. I, and Rangers advanced to be fair to them after that, but you know, we went and we we let them know, and then they were they were brutal in the corner. They had flares going on the whole lot. Like it was, you know, you can look at videos YouTube. The whole you'll see them. They were they were quite boisterous, but they saw us. They saw me. I know well. They saw me with my. I had the Irish flag out. It's got the Celtic uh, logo on the in, in the middle. They saw me. I know well. Do you know? It sounds like you've done your best, Neil. Uh, it's a value. <laughs> I, I don't think. I don't think anyone can fault you for for following your local side. Um, I want to. Um, I want to take things back. So obviously, a couple of times through the recording, we've mentioned the Kano Foundation and. You know, as mentioned, that the, the, their logo is on the, the sleeve of the shirt. They're clearly very important to you guys, and I think rightfully so. There are there's lots of charities around Celtic, isn't there? There's obviously the, the foundation, which is a club's charity, and various others. But the Kano is just a particularly special charity. Um, you know, the, I think they've been on the go. I was looking into it. They've been on the go since 2010. They've taken over 15,000 kids to Celtic Park for free. That's their whole thing, making football free. I think it's all in the name of Martin Kane O'Kane, who was, you know, who the, the foundation is named after. Stevie, do you want to pick up a wee bit on that and, and how important that link up has become to the club? For for me it's very important. Um and, and, and 
for the for the club in general, um, yeah. But for me, it's it, it, it's kind of like a throwback to the, to the old days of getting taken up to the turnstile and getting chucked over it, and then nobody will see you here. It's just a brilliant way of 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 getting of getting kids involved who wouldn't be able to to generally go and see games. For me, there is only there was only one charity who who who. who who I would have wanted to be involved with, and that's that's Kano. You'd mentioned like that the sorry that some of the funds uh, that you generate through the the shirts go towards Kano. Is there any other kind of ventures, anything else you guys do that that help uh, put some money there? But you're a non-profit, right? You're you're, you're not in it to make money. Mm-hmm. So any funds you do make gets channeled back. Is that right? A hundred percent. That's it. Um, it's it's as plain and simple as we have one chosen charity right now, and whilst the club is in. I suppose the embryonic phase of its development. Um, we wanted uh, to, I suppose, you know, have have that one aim and raising money for the for Kano. If I could just dovetail into one of the questions you asked about Stevie, <clears throat> I'm really lucky, to, you know, to to get to know the Kano Foundation years ago. Um, you know, Kevin and and Brian and Joe. Um, whilst I was in Ireland, um, my my day job was working in finance, but I was really fortunate to be involved in professional football in um, in Ireland in the commercial capacity. And um, I remember, I think it was 2017, 2018, I was part of the commercial team that took Celtic over to play Shamrock Rovers uh, twice uh, in Dublin. And the Kano Foundation were at the heart of that. And that's really where the bond started with that organisation. I'd heard of them before, but when I got to meet the guys and then see the kids in person at a stadium and seeing how much joy it brought to their faces and how much good fun they had it just stuck with me so when we were setting up the geneva celtic supporters club um there was no doubt who we were going to choose it was them and the fact that we have close links with them that i could ask them is it okay if we use your brand and raise money um and being given a big thumbs up for the guy gave us enormous confidence as to what's coming down the tracks that will raise a little more money we've got grand ideas about doing you know nights in mulligans and around geneva we have a club shop coming down the tracks hopefully in 2024 uh, where we can expand our merchandise um and yeah we'll just we'll continue with our i suppose creative juices conversation over a couple of pints in mulligans or charlie o'neill's um and continue to sell as many shops as we can you know and give uh, the profits to kino along the way and that's that's as simple as that, if I'm honest, you know. Yeah, Do you know, it's brilliant to hear that, and I can. There's clearly a real sense of pride. You can hear that, you know, from yourself and, and the rest of the guys here. Just how important that is. Of course, it's all about you know getting together and, and the social and the highs and lows of football, and 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 Celtic certainly put you through the ringer at times. Um, but all the CSCs I speak to, all the various guys, there's always a charitable link. It's, it's just kind of part of Celtic, isn't it? And it's great to hear that you're part of the Cano because. They're as good a charity as any. They, they do some brilliant work. If you want to check them out, actually, you know, most folks here are certainly aware of them, but the Kanofoundation.com tells you their whole backstory and how you can support them. Um, Neil, I'll come back to yourself just in terms of what's next for the CSC. Next lean, next lean towards the fact that you may have some nights and different ventures moving forward. But as I say, as one of the younger CSCs, you know, a year and a half old, give or take, what's your kind of hopes and aspirations for the future of the, the Geneva Club? Well, I think for ourselves, um, the most important thing is that we are able to meet up for every single Celtic match is probably the ultimate goal. Whenever Celtic are playing, um, we have the ability to be able to watch our team play um, without any, you know, you know, rigmarole, you know, asking for favours. And that's what's going on at the moment, which obviously is happening across the world and you know, for many, many a people where you're like, oh, my, my team is playing tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon, but your bar is open at three. You know, can you open an hour earlier? And um, thankfully, because, um, you know, I work in the bars, I, you know, I'm able to communicate with the owner and the manager and uh, ask for favors. Thankfully, the staff, which are brilliant that we work with, and, um, you know, some of them just need the extra hours and they're happy to do it. But it, What's kind of happened, you know, by osmosis is that, you know, some of our, uh, some of the colleagues I work with in the bar are now becoming more Celtic fans just because we're showing up and bringing a bit more money and getting them extra hours. So 
it, it's it, it's really good. The sky's the limit, which is such a cliche, but we can only keep growing. And um, the champions champions league nights are just obviously unreal. You have to remember that we're an hour ahead of yourselves back in the UK and Ireland. Yeah. When it's at nine o'clock at night. It's just that extra hour, but people are still coming in. And we did all right this 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 year. We had the one win, but and we I, I can just foresee it keeping going. It'd be nice if we can stay in European football. That would that would be the thing. Um, but that's a club um you know aspect. But in regards to ourselves and what we're doing, we just um, we just need to keep meeting up. Um, we communicate quite well. We've got probably 17 group chats, you know, roughly of, of many different things. And we're just constantly communicating and we're constantly meeting up and, uh, and inviting anybody new. So please, everybody look at us. If you're, if you're in the Geneva area, you're in Lyon for the weekend, you're, you're in Zurich, come down and see us. If the match is on, communicate with us. We will make our, our absolute effort to meet up to, and continue to grow this unbelievably great thing that we're doing. It, it's I mean, wonderful. It, it sounds like a very welcoming place to be in. As Nick's obviously yeah. told us a story about you know the folks jumping on the cheap flights, but it sounds like anybody in the vicinity would be more than welcome down at Mulligan. So that's that's great to hear. Lads, as we're heading towards the the kind of end of the recording, there's a, there's a key question I ask everybody, and and if you've watched a few of these so far, you'll kind of know what's coming. But I'll come to you first, Stevie. So I kind of say all the time, it's a short question. Not necessarily a short answer, but just what does being a Celtic supporter mean to you? Um, what does being a Celtic supporter mean to me? Um, it means everything. It's a, it's it's the club I've followed for um, for at the moment eighty percent of my life. Um, it's it, it's it's always been. Kind of a community. No matter where I've, no matter where I've gone. When when I lived in London, I found a CS. I found a CSC close by who, who 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 took me in down there in Hayes in London. Um, th- I've never, I've never really known anything apart from Celtic. Um, certainly for 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 my. My teenage years and my and, and, and my adult life, I I've not known anything else. But uh, what happens between August and 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 May or or or, or early June is is living and breathing Celtic. Um, that's that's it. Celtic is take away my uh, take away my married life. Celtic's my other life. That's a, that's a very clever uh, caveat safety net you've put in there, Stevie, just in case uh, Missy <laughs> She'll be watching the it. recording. So <laughs> She'll be watching it later, um, aye. <laughs> Neil, look up yourself, same question. Yeah. Um, Celtic for me, as they do say, as Barcelona do say, it's more than a club. It really is. It, it, I really think that... I've always loved sports and football and this that, and the other. And my family don't have a specific Celtic connection, but I always seen the badge and knew that was something that I liked and supported. It was something that was part of what I was, even though I didn't really know. Um, and as time grew on, as I got older, I also realized the politics of it. And perhaps we shouldn't talk about this, but I do think it is part of what we are. Why is, why, did the club begin because of the politics, how the Irish were treated when, when they went, the Catholics specifically. And, and I, I like to throw all that out in, into the bin now. I could care less what your religion is. Uh, and, you know, I mean, even probably where your politics lie. But I think that Celtic represents us as a people, uh, as a shared people between Ireland and Scotland and how we believe in many of things. We are a Celtic people. Um, and it's important to keep that alive because it was beaten down for quite a while and and no money was invested whatsoever. And I think our club is a beacon of light to show. Uh, I think Celtic is very similar to the GAA, in my opinion, and um, which I, I know some people might argue with me from back home. But I do think that the reason why the GAA was created and why Celtic was created was basically the same kind of a thing. 
you know, we need to keep a hold of who we are and what we are and, and continue that forward and never to the detriment of any other people. Um, even though sometimes throughout our history, it's been connected with that. Um, Celtic is a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a family um, it, it's intricately wired and we all come to it as we've seen over the last 40 odd, 30 odd minutes. Um, you know, how we all come from different areas, but we all come to the same club. This club is the greatest football club or arguably the greatest sports club in the world. And I truly believe that. And we've all come to this destination from different avenues for different reasons. And that's why I'm here now talking to you today. Long live Celtic. Forever. It's a great answer. It's a great answer. Mike, how are you going to follow that? The man's a poet. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Is, sorry, Nick. There is absolutely no way that I can follow that answer. Neil, Stevie, superb. Um, do you know, I'll, I'll be very short. It, it means home to me. Um, you know, home, family, friends, um, friendships. Um, it's resulted in uh, loves, marriages, divorces, uh, jobs, you name it. Um, I'm very fortunate not only did I go to the same school as the legend that is Miff, one of your contributors, yeah. I also went to the same uh, school as Billy McNeil um, and Tommy Gemmell. Um, I don't think there's any other school uh, in Scotland that would have had two Lisbon Lions go to their school, let alone one. Um, I, I believe Kieran Tierney went there as well. Um, uh, another former Celtic player, Stephen Pearson, who was in my year at school, went to to, to my school. So, it, I mean, it just follows the journey of my own life. Um, I've been very fortunate to live in different countries over the last 25 years, and you can always find some mates or somebody to watch the football with in any country. Um, as I touched upon earlier on, to go from being a fan to working in football with Shamrock Rovers and Celtic um, a number of years ago now was a dream come true. Um, and I think, you know, the turning point for the Geneva Celtic Supporters Club was, you know, the fact that we've got a hub here. Um, I was part of the, the Dublin uh, Celtic Supporters Club, Neve Podrick, for many years. And I think just that combination of the guys here an idea and I've had a rake of pints over the last 40 years uh, with some of the best people on the planet. Uh, the crack has been absolutely mighty and long, long may it continue. Yeah, do you know, brilliant to hear that, Mike, as well, and, and equally brilliant answer. From all three of you, lads, really appreciate that. Yeah, and obviously a real bonus for you, Nick, over the years, schooling the MIF. What, a, what an absolute privilege for five or six years. So uh, MIF's not just a contributor here, he's absolutely one of the the main men here at the Celtic Exchange, he makes us kind of what we are to a huge extent. Um, Nick, I'll stay with you for a minute. We've obviously touched on some of the merchandise and stuff and and obviously how welcoming as a club you guys are. But where can folks look you up then if they find themselves anywhere near Geneva? Where's best to contact you? Is it on the socials? Is there websites? What's the, the best call? Absolutely. I would just go to the social media straight away. Just type in Geneva Celtic Supporters Club uh, into Facebook and Instagram. They're the two platforms we're most active in. Um, we have a presence on X and TikTok, but they're kind of in the infancy stages. Um, we also have a, an email address. It's uh, csedegenev uh, at gmail.com. I think I was probably on the Chardonnay when I came up with that email address. <laughs> but anyway, and um, yeah, and also if you're in the vicinity and you Google Mulligans or Charlie Nails, um, head to their social media or just pop in. Uh, during the game, you'll no doubt see one of those guys there. Brilliant. And we'll link to these various details in the show notes for this episode. Lads, we're just getting to a close, but I'll just come around you each quickly for your final th thoughts. I'll come to you first, David. Um, final thoughts. Um, listen, even even during this the, this difficult last few weeks of, this, of, the, of the season, we've still been getting together. We've been We've been having a laugh. These guys are, are are close to are close to becoming family. Um, it's they are they are all brilliant to be with. They don't judge anybody. Um, and uh, there was one. If, if I can share one one particularly poignant moment, I think it was the end of last season after we after we won the treble. It was seeing uh, it was seeing Nick and Neil 
um, just to the side of the bar at Mulligan's, just uh, in, a, in a very warm embrace, pretty much crying on each other's shoulders with delight at the way things had gone. There is a photograph of that somewhere. Uh, Nick's got all embarrassed by it because because it was it was basically, I love you, man. You're so good. Thanks for everything. Listen, the guys are the guys are wonderful. Um, Neil and Nick are great. The rest of the club are great. If you're in town, come see us. Yeah, do you know that that's what it's all about, Stephen? And thanks for sharing that. Neil, I'll come to you for your own final thoughts. Yeah, man, thanks a million. This has been great. It's been great fun chatting to you. It's nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, um, please, if you're watching this from abroad, come and see us. There's great crack here to be made in Geneva. And and to be fair, it's probably the only crack you can have in Geneva. It's a lovely place, but there, you know, it'd be a, a quite enough city. But we make um we make we make the bit of fun and uh yeah, um it's a privilege uh, to be friends with Stevie and Nick and the rest of the lads. Uh, it's been so much fun. Um St- that 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 match that Stevie was talking about, I think that was the um I think that was the uh, uh, the league, uh, no, the Scottish Cup final, Scottish if, I, if I'm right. And I just remember there was a, a good friend of ours, uh, Nathan, was just there, and a friend Stevie, um, lad from Liverpool, mm-hmm. um, Steve Smith, and I, I, I lost the plot. Uh, I just took, and uh, there was there was a mountain of pint glasses, dirty. It was so busy, but the, we were so happy that we won. I just took an empty pint glass. I just threw it as hard as I could against the side of the wall, smashed into a million bits, and we started erupting, laughing. It was just the best crack, and and we were all. And then after that, yes, as Stevie said, I'm hugging Nick. I'm nearly crying. What we have here is a brilliant thing. If you're in town in Geneva, come see us, lads. Honestly, it's a and lasses. You know, it's a great, great weekend. Cheers, man. I can only imagine how the owners of the bar would have felt that their own barman is smashing. Yeah, the place. probably shouldn't have said that. It, it was a dirty glass. It was a dirty glass. You know. There was a chip in it. Yeah, there was a chip oh, in good. it. Um, Nick, it was you and I that first made contact, and it's, it's been a really enjoyable, almost an hour or so, actually, with you, lads. So final thoughts to yourself, Nick. Uh, first of all, thank you to you, Tino. Um, you know, this has been great to do this with lads, but I'm also a fan of your show as well, and... I wish you and your team um, continued success uh, moving forward. I know you've now got a number of followers for Geneva that will be tuning in every week to your productions. But from our point of view, you know, certainly to you guys and the followers, if you are coming out, um, you know, definitely come and join us. Um, you know, send us a quick message or just show up. It doesn't matter. You'll be welcomed with open arms. I was slightly worried about where Stevie's story was going there during his, uh, <laughs> during his exit and comments, but um, I think he hit the nail on the head. It is, you know, it's a good bit of crack. It's also for everyone, uh, regardless of your age, your background, your politics, your religion. Um, I can assure you if you're in to watch Celtic or just to watch football, um, then the Geneva Celtic Sports Club is the place that open their arms to you along the way. Yeah. Brian, thanks, Nick. Thanks to you all there, lads. And, and it goes without saying that we wish all the very best with the, the ongoing success of the club. I'm sure there'll be dozens of folks on the back of hearing this jumping onto Sky Scanner to see if they can <laughs> I hope so. Um but listen, just, uh, just, 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 just remember it's ten quid a pint. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry. Chase them away, that, Neil. Well, <laughs> quid pint, ten pound pint. Listen, a huge thank you to Nick, Stevie and Neil from the Geneva CSC for joining me on the Celtic Exchange today and for sharing their CSC story with us. If you want us to feature your Celtic Supporters Club in a future episode, then just get in touch through our social media or via the website at theCelticExchange.com. CSC Stories is brought to you in partnership with Football Without Fans, the definitive guide to Celtic supporters clubs around the globe. That's available on Amazon now. And as always, we'll link to that in the show notes for this episode. But in the meantime, thanks again to the guys. And as always, our thanks to you for tuning in. We'll be back again soon with more CSC stories.